The top golfers in the world have returned to the low country, and WJCL News is working for you to cover the tournament from the tee to the green. It's time to go inside the ropes at the RBC Heritage, presented by Boeing and made possible by these generous sponsors. Good evening, sports fans. Welcome to Inside the Ropes. Round one of the 46th annual RBC Heritage is in the can over at Harbortown Golf Links. Breezy and cooler conditions welcome golfers on Thursday. And when all was said and done this afternoon, you have three guys sharing the first round lead. And I tell you what, sometimes having the first round lead is kind of the kiss of death over there at Harbor Town. Not since 2005 has a first round leader gone on to win the RBC Heritage. So without further ado, and that buzzkill out of the way, let's go ahead and head out to Hilton Head Island for the first round highlights of the 46th annual RBC Heritage. Plenty of wind out there Thursday. Mother Nature really didn't need this kind of help. Some defending Heritage champs having up-down days. Brant Snedeker would finish one over par Thursday, but here at number five, he has the pretty approach that leads to the birdie. Defending champ Graham McDowell is at even par after the first round. He's going to save par here at number two. Two-time Heritage champ Boo Weekly with some work to do after a two over 73 on day one. He does cap off his first round. With the birdie, his chip at number nine, a thing of beauty, leads to that birdie like I mentioned. Jeff Maggart, uh, one of the first guys out on the course Thursday, he makes the turn with the birdie at number nine. He's at one under par. Stay right there at the par four ninth. Rory Sabatini going to go to four under par by sinking the birdie putt. He would give two strokes back on the backside and finish at two under par. Also at two under. Savannah native Brian Harmon at the par 3 17th. Harmon going to roll in the birdie putt for a nice round of 69. Talk about a super group, and how about these three playing together on day one? Tom Watson, Davis Love the third, and the kid, Jordan Spieth. All three going to pick up birdies at number two. Take a look at the five-time Heritage champ, Davis Love the third. He's coming out of the bunker. Nice, nice, nice. Davis Love with a one under 70 on Thursday. Matt Kuchar has turned in some solid rounds at Harbor Town. None as good as today. At the par five second, Kuchar going to roll in the long birdie putt to move to minus three. A couple holes later, Kuchar added again. His third shot at the par five fifth. Good stuff right here. Going to put it nice and close. Leads to another birdie. Kuchar to four under par. Then the former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket going to finish off his round in style, getting his birdie putt at the par four ninth to drop in. Kuchar with a share of the lead after a five under 66 on day one. He's joined by Scott Langley and William McGirt, both playing well in the afternoon. Langley with the beautiful approach at number nine. That's going to lead to a birdie for him. Seconds later, McGirt going to nail his birdie putt. McGirt, Langley, and Matt Kuchar turning in matching rounds of five under par to grab a share of the lead after Thursday's first round. All right, so here's a look at the leaderboard following Thursday's first round. Like we just told you, Matt Kuchar, Scott Langley, and William McGirt tied for the lead at minus five. Two strokes behind them is Harris English at three under par. Then you've got a huge group of golfers at three strokes off the lead at minus two. Fifteen guys tied for fifth, including Brian Harmon, Rory Sabatini, and the list continues. Russell Knox, Billy Horschel, Matt Every, Robert Allenby, Bo Van Pelt, Ben Mark. Martin. You also got Jordan Spieth, Lucas Glover, Kevin Streelman, Charles Howe III, John Malinger, and Tim Heron. All those guys just a couple strokes behind the leaders there after the first round. So we've seen the highlights. We've taken a look at the leaderboard. Now it's time to hear from some of the leaders following Thursday's first round of the RBC Heritage. For that, we head out to Harbor Town Golf Links where Stephanie Farad is standing by live. And Stephanie, I know uh, the, the golfers, a lot of them had to be happy with their performance today. What what you hear them saying after today's first round? That's right, Frank. As you said, it was windy out here today. Usually the wind kicks in later in the day, so we see less leaders. But today, leaders from throughout the day making it onto the leaderboard. But a lot of golfers are just happy of the position that they're in heading into tomorrow, especially with rain and inclement weather in the forecast. Take a listen to what they had to say. Yeah, this morning was, was tricky. It's a tough day of golf uh, to, to shoot. 500 par was some really good playing. The wind was up uh, around this place, trying to judge exactly the wind, how it how it kind of works its way through the trees and alleyways. It's a, uh, a tough tough conditions. It's, it's certainly I, I would not expect to come out and shoot my best round ever around this place. And uh, I come in 500 par. I'm, I'm awfully pleased with with how I played today. You know, we really fed off each other, especially the front nine. Um, yeah, I think 
I think we shot seven under best ball in the front. Um, and, I mean, we played well all day. I feel confident that I can play this golf course well. Um, that's, that's the goal at the start of every Thursday is to have a share of or, or lead the tournament. So um, couldn't ask for a better start. Um, yeah, I left a few out there, but I played really well, and I'm, I'm happy with the score today. It was a tricky day. It's the first day. It's a good start. Um, I played about as good as I could. I got the bet most out of it. So uh, real proud of the way I played the par threes on the back nine. Um, it was a solid round overall. I think I made five birdies and just one hiccup, uh, one triple, unfortunately. But... Uh, a lot of positives out there, so I'm looking forward to taking that to tomorrow. This morning it was tough conditions. Um, you know, I'm happy with the way I played, and tomorrow I just got to go out there and uh, you know find a way to get it done again. Could have been a little bit better, but it's nice to finally you know play a solid first round. It's been a while since uh, I've really played a good first round, and um, you know I'm off to a good start. Now, Frank, as you said, three guys on top of the leaderboard at five under par, but there are a lot of guys that are just a few strokes away heading into the second round. And tomorrow, I bet you'll see a lot of guys wearing blue. That's because it is going to be Blue Day for Autism Awareness at the RBC Heritage. And if you wear blue, you might get one of these ribbons right here. And you'll see a lot of guys wearing blue tomorrow. It's in support of Ernie Els, is a big supporter of this, and he's the one that gets it's all the guys to wear the blue and so bring your blue out tomorrow and you might get one of these pins for autism awareness it's a great cause so be sure to do that but we're going to have much more coming up live here from harbor town but for now back to you frank in the studio all right thanks so much stephanie we are just getting started here on inside the ropes coming up after the break we're going to catch up with savannah native brian harm and the former savannah christian and university of georgia standout still searching for his first pga tour victory could it be coming this weekend? We'll hear from Harmon next. That's when Inside the Ropes continues. As we go to break, let's take a look out there at beautiful Harbor Town Golf Links. And now for more Inside the Ropes, made possible by these generous sponsors. And welcome back to Inside the Ropes. One of the best parts of covering local sports is watching athletes with roots right here in the Coastal Empire Low Country succeed in whatever they choose. So is the case with Brian Harmon. After an amazing amateur career, Harmon with a solid start as a professional. And heck, a solid start Thursday. Harmon turning in a 2 under 69 during the first round. With more on the rise of this former Raider, here's Dave Williams. Brian Harmon's golf game is definitely on the way up. The Savannah native struggled when he joined the PGA Tour in 2012, but since then, five of his six top 10 finishes and 11 of his top 25 placements have come in 2013 and 2014. And right now, the 27-year-old likes the way he's playing. It's good. Uh, did a lot of work last week. Obviously, it's tough watching that tournament, not playing in it, but uh, it's good motivation to get out and get working. I feel like I'm learning and just trying to grow and and uh, just try to get a little bit better every day. That's all you can really hope for. Brian would love for his resurgence to continue here at Harbor Town and the RBC Heritage, a tournament he would certainly enjoy winning. It would be, uh, it'd be a dream come true, really, to win, uh, especially at a, at a place that they gave me my first start as a, as a PGA Tour player. So I'm excited to be here this week. Brian will also have plenty of moral support this week at Harbor Town with his hometown of Savannah just an hour away. Oh, it's going to be great. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be awesome having everybody out here. Um, it's one of my favorite stops all year, and I can't wait to see everybody. Dave Williams, WJCL News, working for you. All right, thanks, Dave. Another local product very much in the mix following Thursday's first round. Buford's Mark Anderson turned in a round of even par. The former South Carolina Gamecock playing in his first heritage since 2012. Last time he teed it up at Harbor Town, he finished tied for 13th at the 2012 tournament. Mark Anderson first played in the RBC Heritage back in 2009 after winning the title at the 2008 Players Amateur in Bluffton. Well, there are plenty of past RBC Heritage champs back at Harbor Town Golf Links this week, including Tom Watson. Watson winning the first of his two Heritage Championships back in 1979. Another two-time champ teeing it up this week, fan favorite Boo Weekly. The Milton, Florida native loves the Heritage for obvious reasons. His 2007 win at Harbor Town was his first PGA Tour victory. The following year, he would successfully defend his title at the Heritage. His last win on the tour came a little over a year ago at the Crown Plaza Invitational, but he would love nothing more than to string together a couple solid rounds here and pick up his fourth tour title and third tartan jacket, even though he does have some work to do after a two-over par 73 on Thursday.
I've got room for a lot more tartan jackets. If I can get a hold of them, I'll take them on home with me. I, I love being here, man. It's just like this, just the atmosphere, the golf course, you know, it's what I grew, kind of grew up on, and it's, it's just fun to be back here like it always is. All right, still to come here on Inside the Ropes, one of the top football teams in the low country doing their part to keep Harbor Town in tip-top shape during this year's RBC Heritage. That story and much more still to come. As we go to break, another look out there at Harbor Town. You're watching Inside the Ropes. Stick around. Now for more Inside the Ropes, made possible by these generous sponsors. And welcome back to Inside the Ropes right here on WJCL. As always, thousands of people are flocking to Hilton Head this week for the RBC Heritage. With large crowds comes large amounts of trash. RBC Heritage organizers have a secret weapon, though, a team of bobcats. For more on this story, we head back out to Harbortown Golf Links, where Stephanie Farratt is standing by. That's right, Frank. We're used to seeing the Bluffton Bobcats in full pads out on the gridiron, but today and like many days, you'll see them out in golf carts, keeping it green here at Harbor Town. Larry Sproul has the story. Pile them up and throw them away. We're ready and the guys are all uh, geared up and got all the bags. Bags of Bluffton High School football coach Ken Cribb says fill up quickly. You just can't imagine the amount of trash that comes out of this place. Cribb says go green and keep it clean is their motto this year. Green because they don't use gloves. It's just them and mother nature. You know we're talking hundreds of trash cans and hundreds of uh, recycling cans. We just about have it down to a size. An equation of one head coach, six coaches, and 30 athletes. You know, it's a big course and uh, got one coach per, per area and uh, he'll have kids assigned to different spots of the course and they'll, they'll be taught the, their, their, their route and what they're looking for and they'll just keep on top of it to make sure we don't fall behind. Dumpsters and dumpsters full. Jack Ernie, a junior on the team, is one of the volunteers this year. He says the opportunity is not all down and dirty. It teaches your work ethic, you know, everything that goes on behind the scenes. A scene they work hard to keep it clean. Well, until next year. Every year we, we find ways to, to improve and things that we wish we had done differently. Now, Frank, it's always nice to see people that you know out on the course to say hi to them, but Coach Cribb and the rest of the Bobcats, they've been so busy, it's just been a passing hello I've given to them over the past couple days here at Harbor Town. Yeah, and you're talking about just a couple days from now, they'll be doing spring football practice, so their spring break, uh, spending some time giving back. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Well, while the Bluffton High School football team is giving back to the Heritage by lending a hand cleaning up, the Heritage Classic Foundation once again giving back Back to deserving students over in Buford County. Seven <laughs> have been named Heritage Classic Foundation Scholars. Five of those uh, honored will receive $18,000 scholarships over the next four years. Two students, Foster Ritchie of Bluffton High School and Olivia Durbin from Buford High School, are going to take home $22,000 scholarships. All the scholarship winners were honored at a lunch in a couple weeks back and during the RBC Heritage opening ceremonies back on Monday afternoon. Knowing that I want to go to medical school someday, every bit of money helps. And I really appreciate the fact that I got the interview in the first place. And then just to know that I actually received the money, it was just overwhelming. This will definitely help a lot because in, for me and my family, it's been about money basically. So maybe this might allow me to go to one of my whichever school I want within reason. Well, since launching back in 1993, the Heritage Classic Foundation has awarded more than $3.4 million to nearly 300 deserving students. Well, to become a scholar doesn't hurt to do some reading. These kids get that idea. PGA Tour pros Mark Wilson and Jason Bond taking time to visit the Hilton Head Library to visit with students who took part in the Plaid About Reading program. The Plaid About Reading program is hosted by the Heritage Classic Foundation. A record 12 schools took part in the program this year. To be able to come out, introduce ourselves, kind of show them uh, maybe a different side of us that they couldn't see while we're competing, and then for us to actually interact with the, the young kids, it's just a, it's a true blessing to be honest. It's just cool to see these kids in the community because 
for us golfers, we can get lost in the fact that you know this is what we do every week. We just go to a new, new town, try to compete, and then we, we move out. And uh, we don't always get to see the impact that maybe we leave because we were here. And that's what we get to see today. Just great stuff. Not only do these professional golfers come into town to, to try to win the title there at the RBC Heritage, they're giving back to the local community in so many different ways. All right, folks, I'm going to take a quick break, but when we return, I'm going to catch up and uh, take a look at the forecast. Some more Theodore is going to join us and let us know of what's looking like could be a soggy second round. All that and much more when Inside the Ropes continues. Stick around. And now for more Inside the Ropes, made possible by these generous sponsors. And welcome back to Inside the Ropes. Of course, weather, an important factor when it comes to playing or heck, even attending a PGA Tour event. A lot of talk out there on the course today, talking about the rain headed the Hilton Heads way for Friday and possibly into Saturday. Meteorologist Samara Theodore joins us now for a look at your second round, which could be a soggy second round forecast. Take a look. Thanks, Frank. All right, so here's what we can expect over the next coming hours. Look at your model forecast shows very heavy rainfall in the area, especially on Friday. Things get a little lighter on Saturday, but we are going to still see some isolated showers, plenty of cloud coverage. By Sunday morning, we will get a bit of a reprieve, but not before a little bit of cloud coverage makes its way throughout the area early Sunday morning. So for those of you headed up to Hilton Head for the RBC Heritage, this is what you can expect. Heavy rain out there as well. Temperatures, they'll struggle to make it out of the low 60s. And another factor, that of wind. Winds are going to be out of the northeast at 18 miles per hour, and then we could see gusts nearing 28 miles per hour. That's it for now. Back to you, Frank. So not a very positive forecast when you're hoping to get in a second round tomorrow, but hopefully the golfers and the fans will be able to dodge a few raindrops and get back out there in case uh, part of the tournament is washed out. If the, if the weather gets too bad and the golfers are sent off of the course, what will happen is, and if there's a delay on Friday, uh, they'll just make it up. They'll just be behind. They'll have to play Saturday morning and finish second rounds and then pick up their third rounds. And they'll just be playing catch up uh, through Sunday night when a champion is crowned there on the 18th. Green. All right, let's go ahead and take another look at the leaderboard following Thursday's first round. Again, we've talked about it all evening long. We got a three way tie atop the leaderboard. You got Matt Kuchar, Scott Langley, and William McGirt. They are tied for the lead at minus five. All three gentlemen coming out with five under 66s this afternoon and this morning. Actually, Matt Kuchar, uh, the only one of those three that had a morning tee time, and he really got hot starting on the backside. He made the turn at two under par. And then he picked up three more strokes there on the front side at number two, number five, and number nine. So Matt Kuchar at 66. Uh, Scott Langley, William McGirt actually played together this afternoon. And they both uh, kind of pushed each other to get to the five under 66 mark. All right, you got one golfer tied or, or in fourth place all alone right now, and that's Harris English. He is at three under par. That is a 68 out there. Then you just got a bunch. 15 golfers currently tied for fifth at two under par. That is a par 69 out there, two under par 69. One of those guys is our very own Brian Harmon, the Savannah Christian and University of Georgia or University of Georgia alum, two under 69 on Thursday. Also there with him, you have Rory Sabatini. You also have Russell Knox, Billy Horschel, Matt Every, Robert Allenby, Bo Van Pelt, Ben Martin, and you got Jordan Spieth. Of course, a lot of folks with eyes on that young man today. He played uh, alongside a, a couple legends Davis Love the third who's won five uh, RBC Heritage titles in, over his uh, career and uh, Tom Watson who came back to the Heritage he won two titles of course the first coming back in 1979 and you also have uh, Jordan Spieth coming off that great showing up at Augusta National last week where he finished runner-up uh, to champion Bubba Watson so Jordan Spieth also at two under par you also have Lucas Glover former Clemson standout there Kevin Streelman Charles Howell the third John Mallinger and Tim Heron. All those gentlemen at minus two after Thursday's first round of play. And uh, also want to give you that update. Mark Anderson from Buford, South Carolina. Uh, he loves playing in this tournament today. He went out and shot an even par 71. So he's very much in the mix. You talk about guys who are at even par, only five strokes off the lead. And again, with the weather coming tomorrow, who knows what's going to happen out there. It should be interesting as these guys try to make it into the weekend and, and try to make the cut heading into the final two rounds there at the RBC Heritage. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us tonight, but we will be back again 
and tomorrow, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Friday night, 7.30, right here on WJCL. Then this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, we shift gears and shift stations will be on WTGS Fox Saturday and Sunday night during WJCL News at 10 on Fox. You can go ahead and watch those on Saturday and Sunday as well. That's going to do it for us. As we leave you tonight, though, one last look out there at Harbor Town Golf Links. They're headed to the second round. Got a three-way tie atop the leaderboard. Should be fun. Have a great night, everyone.